we've got some judges that are elected, some judges that are appointed for life, some judges uh, that have to have certain qualifications, other judges less so. Um, so um, it's not quite as monolithic as in Britain. I don't know exactly what the case is there, but their judiciary seems to be like a clique all its own within the government, with its own little set of beliefs and stuff like our FBI working against us and loading the bomb that was put into the bottom of the Twin Towers in 1996 and stuff. The FBI does some terrible things and uh, they help people and they let people through and they let the bombers through and they they know about them training and stuff and then they try to fly the shit into the buildings and the FBI's got nothing to say except, wow, I hope it wasn't those people that we knew were training. Excuse me, it was, you know. Terrible, terrible stuff goes on. But listen to what the judiciary does in Britain or listen to how complicit they are. Page 159. After the bombings, he issued a blunt warning to the country's judges. Mr. Blair, pardon me. Mr. Blair issued a blunt warning to the country's judges. And you know the bombings he's talking about are 7707. The independence of the judiciary is a principle of our democracy, and we have to uphold it. But it is important that we do protect ourselves. <laughs> We want the judiciary to be independent, but we also think that we should have some value on Britain here, too. Now, that should give you a hint at how ingrained the idea of multiculturalism and submissiveness and, and postmodernism and anti-Westernism is in, apparently, virtually every judge across the board throughout Britain. Mr. Blair continues, Let no one be in any doubt the rules of the game are changing. End quote. Continuing with the narrator. With that one statement, he set the British government on a collision course with the country's judiciary. He was reflecting a widespread feeling that one of the main reasons why Britain had laid itself wide open to terrorism was that the courts had made it impossible for it to defend itself. With things like we were talking about earlier, uh, with the multiculturalism and uh, stopping uh, the prosecution of uh, terrorists and so on. There was a quote I didn't put in here, uh, but they had a big battle. The, the police wanted, or not the police, the terrorism police, MI5, not the local police, the terrorism police wanted to put Britain's uh, maximum holding without evidence up to like nine weeks or something, or 18 weeks, a long time from the two weeks it was. They wanted up to, I think it was like nine. And so there was a big fight. Oh, blah, 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 we got to have more time, to, we, this sensitive evidence, we can't just announce our evidence in public, it takes time to gather it. If we think one of these, these guys is going to strike, it's better for us to put him in jail and hold him for a couple months and build our case than to let him strike, you know. These are the arguments they gave. So finally, they took it from two weeks of holding without any evidence to four weeks. Instead of the nine or, or more than that, that the that the secret police MI5 people wanted. Well, uh, let's go with a little more from the judges bit here. You can see there are like bits and cliques and groups within the government that are fighting against the fight against the bad guys. It's terrible. A harsh spi spotlight was suddenly being shown on the culture of human rights and the role played by the judiciary in enforcing it apparently privileging the rights of extremists over the life and limb of everyone else. Perfect postmodernism, isn't it? For the first time, the Prime Minister floated the possibility of amending Britain's Human Rights Act, the measure that his own government had introduced with enormous fanfare. It was Mr. Blair who, by this measure, had given the judges a far more powerful role in British life. Now, Shakespeare said, but, but we, we but teach bloody instruction, which being taught returns to plague the inventor. Mr. Blair might not be, I'm elevating him maybe by saying he's a teacher of sorts, but uh, take it from Shakespeare, uh, who, and I, I got that Shakespeare bit from Dalrymple, so, Theodore Dalrymple. Now he was trying to rein them in, Blair, now at this point was trying to rein them in, the people he'd set loose threatening a lot of battles uh, with the courts if they used human rights grounds to block his new resolve to deport extremists. That's the last quote. But I think we can end on a bang there. To deport extremists. 
not to jail them for life, not to put them away, not to prosecute them, but to send them out of our borders so that they can't hurt us. Because we're so safe on our island. Is that the psychology that they come from? Why do they think that they can just be nice to people and the people on their island won't come to harm? Wake up! All right. That's it for Melanie Phillips. Fairly good book. If you if you need more on the the um, Muslims and postmodernism and the disintegration of Britain and Europe and stuff, this is a good book. But if you're pretty caught up on it, I would say there's not a lot in there that's worth your time. There are some other interesting stuff I didn't go over, so get a copy if you're interested. But uh, it isn't ground shaking. Certainly not four years after the fact of its publication.